So the next step in our pathway for clustering cells and finding cluster marker genes is to identify highly variable genes. Uh, during this video, you will learn why we need to find the highly variable genes, what kind of mean variance relationship there is in single cell RNA-seq data, and why do we need to stabilize the variance of gene expression values before looking for the highly variable genes. So, our ultimate goal is to cluster cells based on their expression for profiles so therefore, we need to find genes whose expression varies across the cells. Um, so in fact, these highly variable genes will be used uh, for principal component analysis, and then the principal components we find will be used for clustering. But so anyway, first we need to find the highly variable genes. Now we cannot just go and select genes based on their variance, because uh, single cell RNA-seq data has a very strong mean variance relationship. So what this means, so if we have a look here, so here the black dots are genes. On x-axis we have average gene expression, so genes which are expressed at low level are here and high expressors are here. And on the y-axis we have dispersion or variance. And as you can see, uh, the genes are, that are expressed at low level tend to, high quite, tend to have quite high variance. So if we just select it based on variance, we would end up picking all of the low expressing genes, so that would be biased. Therefore, we need to stabilize the variance first, so we need to get rid of this uh, mean variance relationship. And for that, we have Variance Stabilizing Transformation, or VST. So this is how it works. So first we compute the mean and variance for each gene using the unnormalized UMI counts. Then we take log 10 of both the mean and the variance. Uh, so we would end up uh, with the data cloud a bit similar to what I was showing in the previous slide, and then we fit a curve to that cloud to, to sort of uh, show the shape. So this is actually a lowest uh, curve. So this curve will predict the variance of each gene as a function of its mean expression. So then we calculate the standardized counts so that from the expression value of gene X in cell Y, we deduct the mean expression value for that gene across all the cells. And then we divide this number by the uh, predicted standard deviation for that gene. So this prediction we got from this curve. Now there are always technical outliers, so we want to reduce the impact of those. And we do that by setting the maximum value for this to the square root of the number of cells we have in total. And then finally, uh, using these standardized counts, we are ready to compute the variance uh, of the standardized values across all the cells. And this is then the variance we use when we rank the genes uh, based on variance. So in this case, it's the standardized variance. And by default, we take top 2000 genes for the further steps, so for PCA. So now the plots look different. So again, on the x-axis here, we have the average expression. Again, each dot is a gene. And the y-axis now, we have the standardized variance. So you can see that we don't anymore have the strong uh, mean a variance relationship like we had, so we don't have points here. But but this is this line is more or less flat. And now uh, the Sera uh, tool has colored those genes, uh, those two thousand genes which have the highest uh, variance. They have been colored red. 
in this plot, uh, it's exactly the same, except that then the 10 chains that are most highly variable have also been named. All this happens in Chipster in a tool called Filter Cells, Normalize, Regress and Detect Variable Chains. And for this particular step, uh, the, rele <coughs> the relevant parameter is here, so number of variable genes to return. 